Hey, welcome to this video on the basics of unit testing in Rust. We are going to be touching on, or at least hopefully explaining, uh, what a unit or how what a unit test is, and how to create them, how to run them, and how to fix our software. Uh, we'll start by uh, the mechanics of creating tests and running them, and work deeper into uh, understanding what a unit test actually is. Uh, explain a couple of helper macro macros available uh, and also touch on this topic of why unit tests are often defined in their own private module uh, which isn't actually required. So I'll start by creating a project, a new library called Midpoint and Midpoint's job is to find the midpoint of two integers. Uh, you can see that Rust has kindly provided uh, some demonstration code uh, that I can, uh, it's got some tests that VS Code is kindly is also providing a test button for me, but I can run it, uh, run those tests myself by running cargo test and you can see that, you know, happily uh, addition is defined as left plus right and uh, two plus two equals four. Now it's a little bit muddled because of the uh, terminal there, but but yeah, two plus two does equal four, which is which is what we want. Uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of other nonsense that config test, uh, mod tests, use super. You can sort of ignore all of that. Um, there is a reason for it, again, that we'll touch on later. But for now, I'm going to comment that out and just remove it. Um, run the test again, and you can see it's exactly the same result. Okay, so... Um, now we actually want to implement the mid works and what is mid? Uh, so you could say that the mid of one and three is two. That's what we're uh, that's what we're trying to test. And if we run the test now, we get a failure because it's a Rust will compile that we haven't defined anything any function called mid. So let's redefine, <laughs> uh, add as mid, and try it again. Um, click on the button. Uh, we get a panic. This horrible, ugly error message. It, it's saying that mid works uh, panics with an assertion failure where left uh, doesn't equal right. And so what they're saying is result, the result of our mid function, doesn't equal two. Uh, on the left side we get uh, four, and on the right side we have two. So, let's solve uh, a little bit of a problem. The first thing is, uh, well, we need to define this mid function. So, if left equals right, then we can return left, let's say. If you want, you <laughs> you're more than welcome to return right as well. Uh, now, if left, no, if right, is greater than left. What we're going to do here is return the inversion of the arguments because what I want to do next is create the difference of this. The I want to take the smaller one away from the larger one which and so I can guarantee now that in this case right is going to be greater than left. Uh, and to find the midpoint, I take the smaller value and then I add the difference and I divide that by two. I think this is right. <laughs> uh, I'll add some, a couple of extra tests and I'm just going to call them midworks two. And for this one, I'll say uh, three, let's say four and two. Uh, and then I'll do, you know, I'll be crazy. And we'll see if we can, you know, introduce 40 and 20. See if there's some really nice mathematics. Uh, and of course, um, we get a name error. So, um, again, I can either use these buttons or I can run cargo test. And I get three failures, which is exactly <laughs> what we didn't want. Uh, pretend to subtract with overflow. Okay, so what's happening here is we have the 
uh, right minus the left. I thought that I had it right. There shouldn't be an overflow. I shouldn't go underneath the zero. So this is complaining that in all three times I went underneath the zero. So I had an overflow. I'm just going to cheat for now and change this, change the data type to I32. And I want to see if this still happens. Ah, okay. Right. So it does go underneath zero. Which is odd to me. Um, I want to fix that later. If you can tell me in the comments why that broke, I would appreciate <laughs> your help. Let's focus though on actually answering the rest of the questions, which are uh, how do we create and run a unit test we know? And now we need an understanding of what a unit test is. Okay, so a unit test is any function at all annotated with a test. That, when executed, does not panic. Well, at least uh, a failing test is one that panics. And so we don't need these assert macros in here. I could just assert, or I could just panic, or I could say if, if result doesn't equal 2, uh, then I could panic and say, smiley, you know, unhappy face. Now, if I run that test only, what? Ah, oh, if it doesn't, unequal. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that that was a correct. Yeah, wait, if it equals to. Uh, now we panic. And so that is essentially what the, 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 the assert equals macro is doing. Now we actually, um, except in, 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 in our case, uh, I was a bit confused there because I asserted the right thing. So carrying on. Help on macros, we have two. We've got assert. Which just about is um is takes an expression and evaluates it and it must return true. So it can be a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, it's not much more than uh yeah you can have any expression in here as long as it r has a boolean result. So for example, like we could assert that the result is greater than zero. Uh, or let's say greater than left and gr you know less than right. We can put as many of these tests in as we as we as we want. That's all going to be fine. Mm, oh, left and right aren't actually defined in the scope because they are function arguments. So I will say it's greater than one and less than three. Okay, woohoo, everything works. Uh, clear there, and where else do we want? Why unit tests are often defined in their own module. Okay, so within a module, uh, we can specify a, uh, sorry, these modules here are often uh, annotated with the config test. Uh, annotation which just says dear compiler please only compile this module if we are running a test um, and this module is defined so that I can do things like have modules uh, sorry have uh, dependencies that are only brought in when I are uh, when I'm actually running a test. So for example, I've got this pretty assertion thing here and it's actually a hyphen. And for any of these, I'm just going to break my tests for now. 
Let's see if anything changes. Oh, it has to recompile everything. <laughs> uh, because I've got a new dependency, it's going in, uh, it running everything under cargo check and so forth, which is useful, uh, especially when you're recording a video. Now we're just kind of carrying on, carrying on. This import will not pollute the final binary uh, if we were to create it. Um, that's essentially all it does. So we've got midworks, and then we want this uh, really, essentially, we're supposed to get a pretty assert equal. Ah. I'm going to say that assert equal equals 12. And what the problem here is that I, I had the wrong thing. Um, I've got a difference um, and I get a little bit more information. And so what this is saying is that uh, on the left side is uh, two is lower than the right side when they should be equal. And that's it. <laughs> I've kind of muddled my way through there, but I'm really curious as to whether or anyone can figure out how to define midpoint on u size values without hitting that underflow bug. <laughs> I'll see you in the comments. Bye-bye.